Hi, boys and girls. Today is Monday, May 18th, 2020. We are on day six in your math packet, so make sure that you are following along. Let's take a look at our Unlock the Problem. Remember, we always start by reading it and thinking about it. Emma has $457. James has 156 fewer dollars than Emma. How many dollars does James have? So remember, we always need to think about what do we know? Well, we know that Emma and James both have money. Emma has $457. Does James have more or less money than Emma? James has less money than Emma. He has $156 less than Emma. Emma has more money than James. But we know that James has $156 less than Emma. What are we trying to find? What is the question? We're trying to figure out how much money does James have or how many dollars does James have? And what is the unit? The unit is dollars. So now that we have what we're trying to find, what is the unit, we need to think about how we will use this information to solve the problem. If we're solving the problem and we need to find out how much money James has, do you think we will add or subtract? We will probably subtract because we know the amount that Emma has and we know that James has a certain amount less. So we know the whole and we know one part. We need to find the second part. So we'll subtract. I'm going to subtract by using a model with place value. So I'll use a 100 tens ones chart to solve. If you are going to use the vertical way, then you would put vertical way right here. Do what works best for you. Now it's time to solve the problem. Since I'm doing it with a place value chart, I will do hundreds, tens, ones. And then I'll use my model in the hundreds, tens, ones. All of my work would go right there. Once I've finished solving, I'll put my answer to the subtraction problem in this sentence. James has blank dollars. And since it's a sentence, I need to put a period at the end. Once you finish this work, make sure that you take a picture and send it to your teacher. Let's review some time skills. We were working on time for the past few weeks. First, we need to draw on the clock that says 1230. Let's first draw the minute hand. The minute hand is going to be pointing at the six, and that's the long hand. We know it's pointing at the six because we count by five starting at 12. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's where I get my 30. Since the minute hand is halfway around the clock, my hour hand is going to be halfway between 12 and 1.30. My hour hand is also going to be shorter than my minute hand. The reason that my hour hand is not pointing right at the 12 is because we're half past the 12. 
so my hour hand shifts a little bit closer to the one. But now we need to adjust it two and a half hours later. Well, if I'm going to do two and a half hours later, I know that 30 minutes is half an hour. So I'm gonna start where my minute hand is and move it 30 more minutes. Remember, we're counting by fives, starting at the seven. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 more minutes would put my minute hand at the 12. And then two full hours. If it's 1230, I'm moving my hour hands from 12, one full hour, to two full hours. But remember, we added that half, so it actually goes all the way to the three. Remember that because we moved our minute hand up to the 12, our hour hand has moved to the next hour. So you might have been tempted to move your hour hand to the two. But because we had already moved our minute hand, we actually move it to the three. When you are drawing on your clocks or practicing with clocks, make sure that you're thinking about the minute hand helping to move the hour hand. Now let's play the 100 more and 100 less game. 888. What is 100 more than 888? Well, remember, we're only changing the hundreds place. One more than eight is nine. So 100 more is 988. What's 10 less than 888? In this case, we're only changing the tens place, and it's going down. One less than eight is seven. So 10 less is 878. What's 100 less than 888? One less than 888? is seven hundred eighty eight and finally what's ten more in this case just the ten changes ten more than eight hundred eighty eight is eight hundred ninety eight remember the goal is to go fast with this but also to be thinking about numbers as fluid and as quickly as we can. Good work. Let's take a look at the work you'll be doing today. Today, you'll be subtracting three digit numbers. There are lots of ways you can do this, but today we're gonna practice what it looks like for the hundreds, tens, ones chart with vertical, then we'll do a model with place value blocks, and then finally, we'll do a model with place value disks. 923 minus 567. Remember how we're gonna set this up in a hundreds, tens, and ones chart. The larger number always has to go first in a subtraction problem. So 923 minus 567. Do I need to regroup? 
yes, I will need to regroup because three is less than seven. How can I get more ones in, into my column? I have to take away from the tens or borrow. If I take a 10 away, then this number becomes 13. 10 plus three is 13. But now I have one less 10 over here. Can I do 13 minus seven? I sure can. 13 minus seven is six. Now I need to subtract my tens. Can I take six tens away from one 10? No, I can't. Instead, I'll need to borrow from the hundreds. If I move 100 over here, then I get 11 tens. But since I took it away from over here, now I only have eight hundreds. Can I take six tens away from 11 tens? Yes. 11 minus six is five. Finally, I need to do my hundreds. Can I take five hundreds away from eight hundreds? Yes. And I have three hundreds left. Second graders, if you were practicing with me and you got this all right, awesome. You can go do your homework right now and continue to practice. If you got a little confused doing this, we're gonna try to model on the next slide to see if it helps. So stay with us on the next slide so that you can practice using a model. Let's try another problem, but this time let's make a model. We'll use our um, hundreds, tens, and ones blocks to make this model. 800 23 minus 386. To make those 100 blocks, I need eight. Remember, they don't have to be perfect. And then I need two tens and three ones. For 386, I need 300 blocks. Eight tens. And six ones. What do you notice already? Well, I notice that for once, there are more in 386 than there are in 823. So I know I'll need to borrow from the tens. I'm going to take a 10 away and move it over to the ones. Now I have 10 more ones, so I'll count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. How many ones do I have? 13 ones. Can I take six of those away? I sure can. So now, with my red dot, I'm gonna cross out six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
How many ones do I have left? I have seven ones left. So seven would go over here. Now, the reason I just erased those extra dots is because we aren't adding, we're subtracting. So I'm doing this as a visual model, but I don't want to confuse myself. So the blue dots are the only dots that matter. Let's take a look at the tens. This is more tens than this. So now I need to borrow from the ones or from the hundreds, excuse me. So I take a hundred away and I move it over into the tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now, can I take my eight tens away? I sure can. So again, I'm using my red dot and I'm trying to take eight away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm erasing those red because I already took them away. And how many tens are left? One, two, three. So three goes in my tens. Finally, I need to take my hundreds away. Can I do that? I sure can, I can take three away. One, two, three. How many blacks do I have without a line through it? Four. So my answer is 437. If this way made sense to you, awesome. Stick around or go do your homework. If you're still a little confused, we're gonna try one more model to help you practice on the next slide. All right, time for one more strategy. In this hundreds, tens, ones chart, we're gonna use place value discs. Now you might remember using actual place value discs at, home, at school. At home, it's a little bit different. You'll have to draw them. It's similar to the hundreds, tens, ones blocks that we saw, but this way you can sort of visualize it in a little bit of a different way. I'm going to draw 600 discs. Then I'm going to draw ten, seven tens discs and I'm going to do this tens. Let's do the tens in yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then finally, we're gonna do the ones and we'll do the ones in a different color. Do the ones in like a darker green, eight ones. I'll use blue to subtract. Can I take three away from the ones? I sure can. One, two, three. How many ones do I have left? I have five ones left. I did not need to regroup. What about from the tens? Can I take nine away from seven? No, I can't. So again, I need to take a hundreds disc 
And now I'm going to move those hundreds discs into tens discs. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Now, can I take away nine? Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And how many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Finally, I need to take five hundredths away. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, do I have any hundredths left? I don't. So second graders, you can see that there are lots of ways to solve subtraction problems where you need to regroup. Whatever strategy you use, Make sure that you show us your work so that we can see how your brain is thinking. All right, second graders. Today's work is some more practice with subtraction. You can use any strategy that you like to solve. Show us your work. Solve it in this big space. Show how you are thinking. Then solve it vertically, just like we did. And then you'll check your work with addition. Make sure that you're checking your work. It's super important. If you have any questions, reach out to your teacher. We really look forward to hearing from you. But send pictures of your work so that we can see how you are doing. We love you. We miss you. We wish you well. Have a happy Monday.